welcome back friends welcome to another video tutorial from Shomul's biology and in this video lecture we'll be talking about digestive system we'll be seeing the anatomy of the digestive system and the overview of the digestive system in this particular lecture in the series of frequent video lectures in the future we will see the other aspects of the digestive system as well the gastrointestinal system or digestive system digests food and transports the nutrients into the blood the digestion involves breaking down foods both chemically as well as mechanically into smaller components and that can be transported through the digestive tract wall uh, with the help of either bloodstream or with the help of limb now there are many secretions uh, are required for the digestive system to work together along with the different muscular system muscular actions as well as the different gi tract uh, and any other uh, accessory organs the hunger is also controlled by the secretion of some sort of hormones and other chemical components that influence the hypothalamus of our brain to control uh, the whole process of ingestion and not only this uh, hunger is depending upon the body's requirement it's also depending depends on the social behavior the social factors and availability of the food availability of the food in our mouth that influence the amount of food that we can eat now let's move on to the introduction of this anatomy the digestive system consists of two components the alimentary canal that starts in from mouth and ends at the anus which can be visualized here though and uh, the second thing are some accessory organs accessory organs like liver pancreas gallbladder and stuff after the food is ingested it can be processed there in stomach which is the part of the upper GI tract and then there will be uh, like food will be digested in the uh, small intestine after that the nutrients will be absorbed and the food will be released as the form of feces uh, through anus the goals for this understanding is to identify the organs and circular muscle of the digestive tract to list the structures found and represent the section of the wall of the digestive tract to recognize the accessory organs that are involved with the digestive system and to describe the general function of each of the organ of the digestive system to know uh, how they work together as a unit of organ system now let's look at the wall of the digestive tract a normal section of the digestive tract reveals four main layers if you look at here inside one of this layer is mucosa if you look at here it's given here the layer is mucosa which is a very uh, layer inside submucosa muscularis and serosa serosa is the outermost layer muscularis is right after that submucosa is right after that this one is submucosa and finally mucosa which is the innermost layer which will be in contact with the lumen portion okay the different regions of this digestive tract uh, wall have unique structures that are related to their specific functionality the mucosa is again subdivided into further three layers okay and actually uh, three layers of different cells let's look at that those cells are known as the columnar epithelial cells because the structure is like column so you call them columnar epithelial cells in this columnar epithelial cells they build up the whole area known as the villi if you look at here uh, the innermost fold innermost layer gets folded just like a small projections the large folds known as the villi if you look at one of those projections you will see those columnar epithelial cells that make this projections okay now here this simple columnar epithelial cells they densely attached with each other along with some other cells known as goblet cells which are some sort of secretory cells which start secreting mucus 
a lamina propria is another region if you look at here in this picture it's it's uh, written clearly lamina propria is a connective tissue layer that contains the blood as well as the lymphatic vessel which uh, kind of reaches to the top of this projection so this is the lamina propria connective layer contains the blood vessel as well as the lymphatics and there is also a smooth muscle sheet called muscularis mucosa that is present in the base of all this structure the mucosal epithelial normally functions in both secretion as well as uh, the process of digest digestion of the substances and it also involved in the process of absorption of nutrients here is the view of individual cell is given you see these cells are filled with so many sac like structures especially they have golgi apparatus inside back walls inside because they are designed uh, to absorb nutrients goblet cells that are present here these are the goblet cells these are secretory cells to start releasing mucus okay which is nothing but a hydrated mucin protein they produce mucin proteins they hydrate that it converts into mucus well the other mucosal epithelial cells secrete digestive fluids as well as they have the pro property of absorbing the nutrients there are other type of cells nearby to the goblet cells also it's known as enteroendocrine cells and these enteroendocrine cells they start producing hormones that's why they known as the enteroendocrine because they are enteric cells let me take a sorry let me take a color i should explain it with color these are the enteroendocrine cells say this start making hormones that are required for the process of digestion uh, it's not exactly for the process of digestion process but it also helps in the hunger control and a lot of other control issues of the digestive measures nutrients which are absorbed by the epithelial cells they either move to this capillary or this lymphatic and then travel the rest of the part of the body this mucosal epithelial cells are also mitotically active so they can divide with the help of mitosis cell division so this structure is not permanent it's not fixed it may change it actually gets changed almost like every 3 to 6 days they produce new cells to replace the old cells because those cells have continuous work of absorbing and the process of digestion okay now if you look at here this this muscularis mucosa that is a layer it's a very in, in, interesting structure actually this muscularis mucosa have a double layered structure and this double layer is to aid for the digestion as well as for the absorption by moving the mucosal villi so this muscularis mucosa you can see it here if we go back here you will see the muscularis mucosa this is the muscularis externa muscularis mucosa is this layer this is the layer muscularis mucosa just in the basement of the villi and it is attached to the villi so if i draw muscularis mucosa here it's attached to almost like attached with the villi this muscularis mucosa have two different layers and with the help of these two different tissue layers it can actually move the villi in different directions different orientations this movement or wagging like movement this movement can actually help this villi to interact with many different nutrient molecules at the same time and so that it can uh, absorb nutrients that can travel through this blood vessel and lymphatics and there is another layer remember here muscularis externa it contains again two sheet of muscle one is a circular another one is a longitudinal layer two types of layer you can see that's why you see this ring like structures in in, in the middle now this this is the structure the fibers in the two layers they arrange in the right angles to each other and they provide structural support and as well as elasticity to the intestine and this elasticity is very important for a process known as peristalsis okay peristalsis and segmentation are produced by the contraction of the muscle of the intestine 
and actually the muscle if it's only one muscle longitudinal this kind of contraction is not possible because peristalsis means it will be a close contraction of the muscle as you see close contraction of the muscle in nearby areas that allows the food that is present to move forward to a specific direction in this case the food will be migrated from the esophagus from the mouth towards the anus that is the direction of the food movement so we need both type of tissues we need uh, the longitudinal tissue as well as the circular tissue for this whole process to work okay now another specific region if you look at it, this picture you can see it is myenteric plexus myenteric plexus is a network of neurons and that is present in the muscular is external if you see it is very close with the communication with the submucosal plexus as well and together with the two plexus they produce the enteric nervous system and this enteric nervous system is very important because whenever the food is moving our intestine should cross talk between the brain and the intestine and this cross talk is mediated with the help of this nervous system that is actually present in myentric plexus the outermost layer of the digestive tract is the serosus as we talked here the serosa right this is also known as visceral peritoneum peritoneum is a outermost layer always so this is a serous fluid producing serosa which actually lubricates and uh, lubricates this whole intestine and it reduces the friction of the digestive tract within the ventral body cavity so it start releasing all those lubricating compound out outside now this whole component of digestive tract it is present in our body cavity right so there could be like friction between the other area of the body cavity ventral body cavity actually with the help of this uh, with, with 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 this digestive tract because when once you eat things once you drink a lot of water the area is going to increase in volumetric size so it's, it's it may interact it may uh, interact uh, with the ventral portion of the body cavity and that could be dangerous that could be bad for our health that can be prevented by the serosa Now let's talk about the upper part of the gastrointestinal tract. The upper part of the GI tract involved with the process of ingestion because it starts with mouth, ends, the upper part almost ends at the end of the stomach. That's what we call the upper part of the or upper GI tract. Food start ingestion in the mouth. Then inside the mouth, chemical digestion takes place because there we have saliva. And saliva contains alpha amylase enzyme which can break down starch and sugar okay and also mechanical digestion takes place there because we have teeth with the help of that with the help of teeth and tongue uh, we can break those food down into soft round saliva mixed content known as the bolus okay you see the lining of the oral cavity and the pharynx is mostly made up with a specific type of squamous epithelial cell known as the stratified squamous epithelial cell okay stratified squamous epithelial cell actually squamous epithelial mucosa because all this esophagus line is covered with mucus to prevent the damage by the acid reflux the partially digested bolus because you know we can say the partially digestion of the bolus because it's uh, mixed with amylase this partially digested bolus of food is then moved from the mouth to the esophagus esophagus is the connective tube between the mouth and the stomach okay now the transition of esophagus wall slightly sh shown here from the start striated to the smooth muscle the striated muscle are present in mouth region but now we have a more of a smooth muscle 
but its component of uh, this esophagus is both striated muscle as well as smooth muscle. But when we go down to the stomach, you will see most of them made up with smooth muscle. Completely, mostly made up with smooth, smooth muscle. And when the food enters stomach, it is involved with the chemical digestion. And the digestion take place in the stomach are mostly for proteins. Okay. And a little amount of mechanical digestion take place as well. So, these are the three major components of the upper GI, mouth, esophagus, this one, and stomach. These are the three components. Now, let us talk a little bit about the stomach, which is one of the most important constituent of the elementary canal. The stomach, if you look at the structure, the stomach is divided into four different sections. Starts with cardia, the beginning of the stomach, fundus, just after the cardia, body, which is the most of the part having a huge surface area, and pylorus, which is the end point of the stomach where it interacts with the duodenum. Now, if we look at here, there are different layers of muscles present. We have three types of layer. We have a longitudinal layer. You can see it here, straight lines. Circular layer, wrapping around the stomach. And oblique layer, which is a linear structure, but not like the longitudinal. Three different layer of muscle is present. And these layers are very important for maintaining a tension and for fitting to the stress that is going to occur in the stomach because stomach will contain the food, food will stay there for a while and it will do the mechanical shearing of the food. Now here you can see if you look at the muscles from the out, outermost side, what we can see is a, we can see that muscular is external layer that we can also saw earlier that muscular is external layer of the stomach it is unique because it carries the three different layers and another very important structure of the stomach is this kind of folds the inner layer folds of the stomach this Due to these folds, the stomach can increase its surface area, increase its size based on the amount of food it receives. Okay. These regions are known as rug. Rug. G U E. Yes. Uh, sorry. G A E. Rug. Rug are specific cleaves or this kind of folds that are internal folds that we saw in, in stomach. Okay. So, stomach can expand uh, due to its like requirements. Once the food is mixed with the gastric juices which are secreted by the stomach itself, the stomach is called uh, all this all this food mixed with the gastric juices is known as the chyme. Remember, it is known as the chyme which is then moved from the pylorus, which is this point, the end of the stomach, to the duodenum into the small intestine. Because this is the end of the upper GI. Once the duodenum starts, we call it the lower part of the GI tract. And that is the ultimate job of the food to be removed from the pylorus to the duodenum. Though there is a specific valve present known as the pyloric sphincter. We will talk about that later. Let us move to the second part of this intestinal tract that is the lower part of the GI or lower GI. Now, the second part of the gastrointestinal tract is the lower GI tract or the lower part of the gastrointestinal tract or elementary canal. It mainly composed of two different units, one of which we, can, we are seeing right now first unit is the, the small intestine and second is the large intestine. 
okay pardon for bad handwriting bro small intestine and large intestine small intestine is a portion mainly and actually if we combine both of them together as a lower gi tract the majority of the chemical digestion process and actually all the nutrient absorption process take place in the small intestine okay large intestine is the portion which uh, carries uh, the last in undigested materials convert them into feces and help them to be defecated outside okay now if we look at the small intestine this slide is about that small intestine structure small intestine is divided into three different parts which are illuminated in this picture with this yellow purple and pink color starts with duodenum yellow color jejunum color is purple and ileum colored pink here these are the three different regions of the small intestine and if we look at the structure of the small intestine it's very much similar that of a structure we saw in stomach as per the tissue layer or histological structure proceeds but a little difference as well you know in this case we also see three different layers in the inner wall of the small intestine and three different layers of the tissues longitudinal circular as well as the third layer but the unique feature about the lower intestine the small intestine is to have a finger like projection known as villi or villi as you can see here you see this finger like projections all around this internal surface of the small intestine this villi is to increase the surface area because the job of small intestine will be to absorb nutrients so the more surface area they they have the better absorption they can do okay now this villi if you zoom into villi one of those villi you see the villi is further divided into small fragments this smaller even smaller fragments are known as microvilli because these are the constituents of the villi right that is the part of the small intestine and this intestine aids the body for defenses against different pathogens by secreting antimicrobial compounds as well as antibodies which are also known as immunoglobulins those immunoglobulins which are produced there in small as well as in large intestine they also produce those antibiotic compounds that can fight against pathogen though in the large intestine a lot of healthy good bacteria resides and that is very very important for our living now let's look at the large intestine which is uh, almost the last part of the alimentary canal it also consists of several fragments it starts with is a ascending colon transverse colon and descending colon these are the three different parts that we see see here okay the job for this large intestine is to hold those undigested foods do a water absorption and then finally conversion of those undigested food into feces and then release them through anus and the partial undigested foods they, they'll store the feces will store for some time in the rectum and there is another unit called cecum which is attached to a specific portions which is a extended region known as appendix the function of which is mood now that means which is not required now but somehow in the evolutionary history they have some function in the digestion they pl played some digestive role now here you see in those large intestine as well as small intestine they what they have mainly in the in in regions of ileum in the uh, small intestine they have lymphoid nodes in the ileum they have lymphoid nodes and those nodes are known as pears patches pears patch the pears patch are filled with leukocytes leukocytes means white blood cells 
which are the immunogenic cells they can help in to fight against infection okay now in the large intestines job besides the storing of the undigested food and convert them into feces the other job is to absorption of water and salt and also absorption of vitamin k there are also other bacteria present there the the healthy bacteria i talked about they start producing a lot of vitamin k and then supply the vitamin k to our body the large as you see there are three bands of smooth muscle again called the tinea coli it's caused the outer portion of the colon to be packed into the pockets called hostra that is a structure that's a unique structure though hostra is a region where they are properly embedded in the body so that it's remain attached with the outer portion of the body otherwise rest of the portion of of this digestive tract is not linked in any way okay they're separate from the rest of the ventral body cavity okay now we will see some other accessory part of the digestive tract that also helps in the process of digestion and absorption of the food one of such thing is sphincters sphincters regulate the passage of food from one region of the digestive tract to the next and then finally it helps uh, for the feces to get out of the body so the role of sphincter in the process of controlling the digestion is huge as you can see in this left hand picture the sphincters are present every different branch points of the digest digestive tract Here you see the sphincters of the digestive tract divided into mainly six different sphincters we can see here one of the sphincters are related to esophagus known as the esophageal sphincter known as the upper esophageal sphincter u e s okay and then lower esophageal sphincter l e s okay both of them are physiological sphincters then at the end of the stomach if you see here at the end of the stomach the junction between duodenum and stomach and the pylorus of the stomach there is a sphincter that controls the release of the treated mechanically and chemically treated compound in the stomach to entry to take entry into the duodenum okay there comes the role of the pyloric sphincter and then it comes down to ileocecal sphincter which is a circular smooth muscle type of cell. it's not it's not any kind of physiological structure it's a smooth muscle cell in circular fashion both this pyloric sphincter as well as ileocecal sphincter ileocecal sphincter is also found in you see here ileocecal sphincter found in the interaction the junction between the small intestine with the large intestine so as i mentioned the sphincters are present in all of the branch points and then we have internal anal sphincter and we have external anal sphincter both are present in the anus area that controls the movement and release of the feces outside the body okay the upper esophagus sphincter prevents the air from entering into the esophagus the lower esophageal sphincter prevents the acid reflux which can go from stomach to the esophagus that can cause the damage to the esophagus or acidity is a prime problem with this acid reflux pyloric sphincter this one regulates the passage of chyme from the stomach to take entry to the duodenum The ileocecal valve controls and regulates the passage of chyme from ileum to the large intestine, and then the last two types, like the internal and external anal sphincter. The internal anal sphincter, or IAS, when it is relaxed, it produces the urge to defecate. When it relaxes, 
defecation occurs and external anal sphincter when it relaxed it allows for the defecation so both of them needs to be relaxed for the process of defecation now let's move to the last part of our discussion which are accessory glands there are several accessory glands which are not directly involved with the gastrointestinal tract but plays very important role one of such is salivary gland we have normally three types of gland that are important salivary gland liver and pancreas in the salivary glands they moisten food cleanse and protect the mouth and it produces alpha amylase known as a salivary amylase because the same enzyme is also secreted by pancreas known as pancreatic amylase this amylase enzyme help in the digestion of starch and other carbohydrate molecules it can break down starch the second one is the liver this is probably one of the most important organ of all from the perspective of digestion itself it is very very important because it produces bile which actually emulsifies the fat because without the help of the release of this bile or bile salts we cannot be able to digest fat because this bile neutralizes that by emulsifying the fat molecules and break them down and increase their surface area so that other lip lipase enzyme can can actually break down those lipid molecules now this bile that is secreted sometimes the extra bile that is released by the liver is stored in a small sac nearby the liver which is attached to uh, the the region of the duodenum area that part that small area small section is known as the gall bladder which stores this bile okay and then third one is the pancreas the the arrangement of liver pancreas gall bladder is very close to each other and they are all connected because they have a simple single duct system through which all those necessary enzymes are released into the duodenum here you see in pancreas they have a main proteolytic enzymes to be produced it releases different host of digestive enzymes into the duodenum with the help of the same pancentric uh, the same type of duct that we use the duct when is involved and engaged inside the pancreas is known as the pancreatic duct but that is the duct has the branch and attached with the gall bladder as well okay it also produces a bicarbonate bicarbonate can neutralize the acidity of the chyme that is released right after uh, the treatment in the stomach that is a, another important priority to make the chyme neutralize uh, before using them in, in in the intestine otherwise intestinal cells may have some problem with this acidity stomach cells are designed to to sustain their acidity so that in a sense are uh, the anatomical overview of the digestive system i hope this video help you if you like this video i want you to watch all the sequential videos of the digestive system it will help you to understand the whole process of anatomy as well as the physiology of the digestion in human thank you if you like this video please hit the like button subscribe to my channel to get more videos like that and share this video with your friends thank you